Hey guys, Dr. Childs here. Today we're going to be talking about healing Hashimoto's thyroiditis with the use of laser therapy or lasers in general. Now, this is a really um, interesting therapy that not a lot of patients, Hashimoto's patients, are aware of, and I would put in this category including doctors as well. We're going to talk about how these lasers have the uh, capacity to potentially regenerate some thyroid gland tissue, how they can help um, fix or, or reverse autoimmunity in some thyroid uh, patients with Hashimoto's. We're going to talk about which type of lasers are useful for this and a ton of other information. So if you don't know me, I'm Dr. Childs. I'm an internist. I specialize in treating patients with um, thyroid conditions, helping people with hormone imbalances, and of course, helping people lose weight. But today is about Hashimoto's. More specifically, we're going to be talking about laser therapy. So I'll put this up there so you guys can see it. Now, before I jump in, I want to say this isn't some voodoo thing. Um, if you're not already aware, lasers are used in a lot of different areas of medicine. Um, in fact, in the area of cosmetic dermatology, lasers are used. Those are CO2 lasers. In the area of surgery, um, we use warm or hot lasers to actually cut and uh, cut through tissue. And then low level light or low level laser therapy, which we're gonna be talking about in just a second, that's used in a lot of other conditions. And I'll talk to you about some of those conditions we, that I've used them personally in. Um, so, but first I wanna answer this question. Can thyroid gland tissue regenerate? So this is an important question that you need to understand. Uh, or there's an answer to this question that you need to understand. Um, and a lot of people will ask me, they'll say, hey, I've had my thyroid gland removed, I've had a portion of it cut out, I've had Hashimoto's for 30 years and my, my tissue is dead, it's been irradiated, can my tissue regenerate? And the answer to almost all those is no, okay? So we're gonna talk about how these lasers can actually help in a second, but I wanna make it clear that at least right now, there's no way to regenerate dead, completely dead, thyroid gland cells or thyroid gland tissue. Okay, that means if it's been surgically cut out, it's gone, right, it's gone forever. Now the thyroid can hypertrophy, but cells cannot grow back. Hypertrophy just means, let me open this for you. So a hypertrophy means like if we imagine a cells like this, this is a thyroid gland cell. Um, if you cut out half the thyroid, some of those cells can just grow bigger and make up for some of the other cells that have been cut out, but there will never be a, a case where the thyroid gland, at least right now, can grow back. New cells can become, um, uh, it can just spontaneously regenerate new cells. So if your thyroid's been removed via thyroidectomy or it's been completely destroyed via Hashimoto's thyroiditis, end-stage Hashimoto's is what I'm talking about, then this therapy is probably not going to be effective. But if you catch Hashimoto's early enough, so if you're in earlier to, if you're in the early to, uh, let's say, moderate stage where you have some damage in the thyroid gland, but those cells that have been damaged are not completely destroyed, they're just damaged, then that's where we get into the, the effectiveness of these laser therapies. So let's talk about that next. So what, what type of lasers am I talking about here? I'm talking about a specific type of laser called LLLT. That stands for low, laser, low level laser therapy, okay? It's kind of, if you've never heard about it before, maybe it's a little confusing, but it's actually fairly common. And as I mentioned, I've actually had a lot of experience using a low level laser therapy um, uh, clinically. So when I was uh, in my physical practice, I would use it to help people with nerve cell regeneration and treating peripheral neuropathy. And I used it actually to kill toenail, toenail fungus, believe it or not. So these lasers can provide a significant amount of energy, um, but they are considered cold lasers, okay? Which means that they don't really generate that much heat, even though they are generating energy when they get in there. Now, the problem with these lasers is that um, you're going to say, I know what you're already thinking. Well, why haven't I heard about these things before? And the answer is simple. Lasers don't really penetrate deeply into the skin, all right? But we can use this as an advantage when treating thyroid conditions because the thyroid is very superficial, meaning it is not deep inside of the body. But if, for instance, let's say you wanted to reduce inflammation in like an organ inside your abdomen, there's just no way that the laser is gonna penetrate deep enough to go through your skin and your fat, your abdominal fat, um, the fascia, uh, you know, your intestines and everywhere it needs to be in order to get to like, let's say the kidneys. It can't go through bone and it can't do, can't go through lots of other uh, dense organs, but it can get potentially to the thyroid gland because it's very superficial. If you think about it, there's not a lot of fat up in that, that area of your neck, which means that those lasers can actually penetrate through and they can get to the thyroid gland. So what you need to know here is that the reason this potentially works is because we're using a cold laser and it doesn't have to go very deep to get there. Now, the next thing that we need to talk about is why don't doctors know about this? Well, the reason is simple, and I've explained it to you before in other um, videos, but doctors really don't consider Hashimoto's thyroiditis um, a condition that needs to be treated really, right? What they, could, what they don't consider Hashimoto's by itself um, a condition that, need, that needs to be treated. They can t con consider hypothyroidism, which is a result of Hashimoto's, the thing that needs to be treated. So they have no problem letting Hashimoto's 
get so bad that it destroys your thyroid gland because they're not worried about the autoimmune component. They're worried about treating the low thyroid once it occurs. But you, hopefully, you listening to this, you are a savvy thyroid patient and you know that it's better to prevent the destruction of your thyroid gland through these sort of therapies, right? Because you don't wanna to have to be reliant upon thyroid medication for the rest of your life. It's better to stop that, that damage if you can and prevent it from occurring. So that's really where this uh, therapy comes into play. Now again, as I mentioned before earlier, you really need to start it early if you wanna have the effectiveness because we can't use it if you're in end stage Hashimoto's. If your thyroid has already been completely destroyed over 20 or 30 years of thyroid gland destruction from autoimmunity, this is probably not gonna help. But if you catch it early enough and you do it more frequently, then you can get some benefits. So let's talk about some of those benefits. So this, this information I'm about to share with you comes from uh, a couple of studies that were done out of uh, various countries. I think one of them was in Brazil or at least um, South America, I'm not, I can't remember exactly which country off the top of my head. But after I was looking at some of these results, I was able to find um, the benefits that it can provide to patients. And it's actually pretty astonishing. So the first benefit is that if using this um, low level laser therapy on the thyroid gland, patients who do it, they tend to see an increase in thyroid function. And what that means to you is that the thyroid gland is able to produce more thyroid hormone, okay? So if you can think about it this way, in Hashimoto's, we have a lot of inflammation, we have a lot of damage occurring from your own immune system. And this damage is reducing the ability of your thyroid to produce thyroid hormones effectively, right? That's why you have to take thyroid medication. But if you can reduce that autoimmunity, it will naturally allow your thyroid to produce more thyroid hormone, and that will actually decrease the need for thyroid medications. Why? Because your own thyroid gland is now producing the thyroid hormone that it needs to or that it should anyway. So by sticking the laser on the thyroid gland itself, there's probably some reduction in, in inflammation which is occurring, and also some regeneration of damaged, damaged but not destroyed thyroid gland cells. And if you can restore those, those damaged cells, maybe before they weren't producing thyroid hormone, or if they were, they were doing it less effectively. But if you heal them back up to where they should be, then now they can produce thyroid hormone and you'll actually feel a little bit better. The next thing is that patients actually see a reduction in antibody levels, um, which is actually pretty astonishing. So it's probably, again, that probably is due to the fact that the laser is reducing um, inflammation and autoimmune, autoimmune attack inside of the thyroid gland cells themselves. Lasers obviously will increase blood flow. That's one of the reasons why I would use it to treat peripheral neuropathy. So in a lot of patients who have neuropathy, peripheral neuropathy, like in their legs, where they get numbness and tingling, like in diabetes, a lot of this is due to the fact that there just isn't enough nutrients getting down into um, those nerves. So if you can just supply the right blood flow uh, or increase blood flow, you can actually allow the body to heal itself. So there's definitely some increased blood flow, which is occurring. And this is actually going to um, allow thyroid hormones to be circulated better throughout the body. So even if you're not necessarily producing a ton more thyroid hormone as a result of the the low level laser therapy, just having that, that um, increased blood flow and increased movement of the thyroid hormones throughout the body can probably help improve symptoms as well. And then lastly, people who use this, they do see an increase in thyroid gland volume on ultrasound. So you can imagine, let me uh, kind of draw a thyroid gland for you. So this is the thyroid gland. In Hashimoto's, what ends up happening is the thyroid gland gets smaller and it, so it atrophies. So what ends up happening is if you can reduce the inflammation, you can actually increase the size of the thyroid gland, and that's what we're seeing here. So when you actually look at it under an ultrasound, you can check the size, like the volume. So we can imagine actually measuring that volume. And if you're, if you're um, in this case, they've, they noticed that the thyroid gland was actually enlarging to its normal size, by the way, not, not getting big like a goiter, but to its normal size, which is a good thing in this case. So as I mentioned, it's probably gonna be hard to get this sort of therapy from your standard run-of-the-mill doctor. Um, and the reason is because they don't, like I said, they don't really treat Hashimoto's. Um, they, they don't, they're not really interested in the autoimmune aspect of Hashimoto's. Instead, they're interested in treating the low thyroid function with thyroid medication. And you'll know what I'm talking about if you've been to your doctor. So how can you get low level laser therapy? Now I should point out here, it is not FDA approved specifically for the treatment of Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And it's unlikely to be given what I just mentioned to you previously. Nobody's really going to do the study on that because doctors have already solved how to treat Hashimoto's by focusing on low thyroid. But there are still a lot of clinics who will use the use of low-level laser therapy. Uh, the clinic that I was in previously, we used LLLT, but we did not use it for Hashimoto's. I wish I would have known about this because I would have done it at that point. Um, but I do know, for instance, that a lot of chiropractors tend to use low-level laser therapy. So it, you could go to them and get that. Now, specifically when it comes to getting benefits for our Hashimoto's, there needs to be, it needs to be used at a specific wavelength. Um, and for a specific duration. So most of the time that's about two times per week, usually over a 10 week period at a very specific wavelength. And it has to be at the right wavelength. If it isn't, you might not see 
um, the reduction in inflammation, or you might not see the penetration into the actual thyroid gland tissue. So there are some specifics here that you should be aware of, um, but if you're interested in using this type of therapy, call around, ask some clinics. I would say first focus on chiropractic clinics. Um, if they focus on autoimmunity or something like that, that might give you the best results. Um, or you could just buy it yourself. So these lasers are not actually that expensive, believe it or not probably in the range of 500 to $1,000. So if this is something you're really serious about, I would definitely consider purchasing one yourself and just using it, but make sure you do it correctly, right? You gotta do some research, look at those studies and get the right wavelengths to make sure. It's unlikely you'll cause any damage, but you might not get any benefit unless you do it correctly. If you have used low level laser therapy before to treat Hashimoto's, tell me about it. I wanna hear about your experience, share that below. Um, and if you haven't already, make sure you download my free uh, thyroid PDF resources. I have tons of information just like this, all designed to help you um, or anybody who has thyroid conditions, just help you feel better by using therapies that you may not be aware of. And so a lot of these things are really effective and can work well. Um, and otherwise, leave your questions or comments below and I will see you guys in the next one.